one take this time. This is the Fat Man with ProAudioCoalition.com, and my blog is called Big Pictures and Shortcuts. Got it. This is part three of the Korg IMS 20 synth sequencer on iPad. As you recall last time, we covered voltage controlled oscillators, filters, amplifiers, and envelope generators, and I keep promising we're going to cover drum channels and what's different about a drum channel from a synth channel. Sorry, I use the term channel and track interchangeably sometimes. I hope you can roll with that. When you work on a drum pattern, you're playing with ons and offs, and then when you get into the details of it, you can adjust other little parameters of any steps that happen to be on. We'll show you that. First we go into the drums window by clicking up here under components for drums. You've got a sequencer for your synth, you've got a sequencer that controls your drum track. And we look at this beautiful matrix thing which shows what each individual drum channel is doing. Channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, all the way down, and each of these vertical things is a step. Listen, the drum tracks are cooler to use for drums because they have some easy things that make them very drum friendly. Like they have these easy on or off buttons. And uh, they've got the pretty all drums at once visual matrix. Uh, the synthesizer doesn't have that. Of course, it doesn't need it. There's only one of it. Now, you're also hearing the synth. Let's mute the synth. Mixer, mute. Back to drums. Each one of these you hit is, a, is like a strike on a drum. I'm going to solo this one. There's two ways to do it. You can go to Mixer and solo it. Solo! Solo! The other way to do it is to go to Drums. Go to that channel that's desired. Sequence edit and solo. Okay, so we've got these Ani Offies under the switches. But beyond on the offy, we also have access to pitch, an octave, and uh, gate. Pitch, octave, gate. We can change and also look at volume and pan. But these things aren't adjustable beyond that. It's fixed. You've got just, you've got these three, pitch, octave, and gate, and you've got volume and pan. Those are all you have and you can't really change them. Pitch, octave, gate. When I turn the pitch up, see? Octave, you can you can turn it up or down radically. Now gate, we'll come back to what gate means. Volume and pan. So now you can turn down the volume on these guys. Not like a drummer to have dynamics, really. Pretty unrealistic. But since this is a, <laughs> but since this is a an electronic drummer, we can ask him to have dynamics. So some of the hits are louder and some are softer than each other. And of course, we can pan them left and right, which you won't be able to hear on this camera mic. Those are the things that you have available to you on the uh, on the drum editor. And you can also play around with the chaos pads down here. Keyboard, chaos pad, keyboard. And that swaps the two out. Keyboard. Chaos pad. And back to get out of it. Now taking a look at the synth channel, we just click on synth up here. And this one gives us access to, wait, where is it? This one gives us access to A. There it is. Grab the little picture. This one gives us access to our sequencer at the same time as our patches. Let's take a look at the sequencer. There's a lot of versatility here. You can, uh, I'm gonna take the drums out of the solo mix. Mixer, there we go. I just unsoloed drum channel four. Okay, so now we have our, our sequencer channel for our, uh, for our synthesizer. As we showed you once before, you can make the sequence longer by stretching out which of these voltages gets piped back into the reset. 
So it outputs a voltage here and resets the sequence when it gets a signal. Now, this top one affects pitch. This one affects octaves, the second row down. This is gate. You can think of it as how hard that key's been hit. You can think of it as velocity. But really, it's just one more voltage that you can route to anything in a software synth. Remember, the beauty of the software synth is that you can take these voltages and make them turn knobs for you automatically. So you see this is a little bit different because we have more buttons up here than we did on the drum channels. The drum track doesn't have parameter or voltage tracks on its sequencer. Just like the drum channel, you've got volume and pan, you've got pitch, octave, and gate, but you've also got three voltages which can be routed to anything. I believe you use the patch bay to do that, and we'll look into that on patch bay day. And then you've got parameter, which gives you three more tracks, which when you click on param, it gives you a chance to send those to anything. So you can send out one of those things to master tune. So param one is now set to master tune. We start it going. There it is, master tune. See, we're, we're just tweaking it around automatically using that sequencer. That's pretty cool. And there are a lot of different parameters that you can set these things to. Voltage control oscillator level, or scale, or portamento time. And it'll start the appropriate knob wiggling around down here. Cutoff is always a good one. It always makes you sound like you know what you're doing when you play with the filter cutoff knob. So, drum channel versus a synth channel. How many drum channels are there? Okay, there's only one synth channel. There are six drum channels. A synth patch can change during a song. We figured this out. So once you set a drum channel to play a certain sound, it's going to stay at that sound throughout the whole course of the song. But if you change a, a synth channel, you change your synth channel, you can change the, the, uh, the sound that it's using. When you're making your song, you make it out of little patterns. In each pattern, you can set your synth to a certain sound. So I like that sound. See? Different synth sound. Why? Because we only altered the synth sound in pattern 3. If we're in pattern 4, and we go to edit the synth, then whatever edit we do, we'll also stick with... We'll stick with that pattern. Back to the pattern page. Now, not so with drums. I'm going to edit a drum sound now. I'm going to edit the bass drum sound. This is another difference between the drum, the drum channel and the synth. So you've got this cute little boom, boom, boom going on all the time to help you edit. So that's a very different sound. When I go back to the pattern page, solo that drum. And change patterns. That drum doesn't change. So my, when I change a drum, it stays changed for the whole song. Once again, these are the differences between a synth and drum channel. A synth patch can change during a song. Uh, if you set a drum channel to a patch, it stays the same throughout the song, no matter whether the pattern changes or not. In their sequencer, the drums don't have the extra three channels that you can send out as voltage, and they don't have the extra three channels that you can send out as a parameter, so they're a little limited that way. But they also have the advantage that they have the easy on-off trigger buttons, and uh, they have the pretty all-the-drums-at-once matrix. Oh, and the drums have that over and over trigger while you're editing a patch on one hand, but they have uh, no simultaneous access to their step sequencer. So while you're editing the patch on a drum, 
you're not gonna hear exactly what notes are being spewed out by your step sequencer for that, but you will get the boo 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 boo. Next time, we'll start getting into the patch panel and we'll run our little virtual wires from one hole to another hole and we'll look like we're really mad scientists and uh, who knows, maybe we can make a little picture of smoke come out of the uh, picture of the synthesizer. Who knows?